What do you think are the one or two elements that made Bain so successful with reflection? Well, I think the first element was the idea of taking the consulting skills developed at Bain and Company and applying that to uh, actually actually owning the businesses. Bain and Company had been a very successful consulting firm, growing great businesses and great clients in, in, in globally. And the idea that Bill Bain had was, well, if we could own those companies, we could do that even faster and better and, put, and, and help them with these analytic resources. We're, we're a huge tool to these companies. And it turns out that you know that, that philosophy worked really, really well. In fact, most of the industry is adopting that now. They hire Bain and Company and McKinsey to do what we do set internally at, at, at Bain Capital. Um, the second uh, piece, piece, uh, critical piece was alignment with investors. So when Bain Capital was formed, most of the a lot of the investment came in from the Bain partners, the people themselves, and we've done, we've really held firm to that t- today. Where uh, let's say our, our last twelve billion dollar fund, over a billion of capital, has come from all the people in the company, and that and that is uh, you know a hundred times more in terms of percentage than most of, of the of the of the investor firms out there. So so high alignment with our investors was was a, was a second a second aspect of it. And then I think I think a third aspect was was really uh, working in a team environment as we had in consulting. So so we've developed a global team network that can apply these resources, you know, globally um, at a moment's notice to to help any business. So those three things I think have, have propelled the success of Bake Up. I, I I love those in terms of those three segments. Uh, I, all things are great are done in threes. I find um, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so if that's what like was critical to the success, if you had a magic wand and you could change a couple of elements that you did, strategic decisions, what would you change that you think negatively impacted the course or trajectory of Bain? Oh, I, I, I think course has been been uh, uh, a great course. So, so uh, what I think we maybe could have done is is applied the model earlier globally. You know, we recognize the value of a global network, and we and and I think in uh, Bain Capital started in eighty four. And we really didn't take the model globally until 2000 or so, where we opened up in in uh, in, in London. So we, we formed an office in London, uh, the whole group over. And I, I was involved in that. I got an apartment in London, and it was very exciting times. We thought the model of improving companies and building companies would apply to other ge- geographic areas, and it turns out it did. I think we could have done it earlier, and it turns out that that global network is a great competitive advantage because. Uh, you can have expertise in in Europe and industrial chemicals, and we can apply that expertise to a company here in the U.S. Or we have our Asian operations, uh, a company in Asia that wants to sell a product in the U.S. We could we could help them set up with retailers in the U.S. So so the value has been huge of creating that global network. You know, could we have created it earlier? In hindsight, yeah, maybe we could have. You mentioned that global network. I, I heard you say on the GS talk about going from a local business to a mid market buyout and going global. And, you know, when we look at the scaling to, I think it's 160 billion AUM, you'll probably correct me, but roundabout, um, 160 billion AUM. What are the one or two biggest challenges that one faces in scaling a firm to that proportion? It's maintaining the investment discipline and, and, and the culture of the firm. Um, and the way we've done that, we have a, an investment committee that, that basically looks at every investment, whether it's an investment in a company in Rhode Island or a, a company in Malaysia. So we try to maintain that that discipline. And the culture of of really trying to do good investments and build companies and, and have a, have a high performance culture, so that's the thing you've really got to you know keep keep the reins on. You don't want to view yourself as an asset gatherer. Just the, you me- if you measure yourself by the amount of money you put out the door, it, uh, we believe it causes real trouble. You want to measure yourself by the performance and the value that the value that you create investing that money. Can I ask, with the concentrated power of those ICs, does it not mean that they become a bottleneck? When you think about the speed of decisions that need to be made, especially in markets today, you'd be meeting every day for your IC given the size of these vehicles. How do you not be a bottleneck but have that decision-making structure? Well, that's a great question. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, that involves a lot of late-night work and a lot of work. Bain Capital has a huge work ethic. And... Uh, and so I, I would honestly say that we've never lost the deal because of an IC bottleneck. We have a culture of being extremely responsive, extremely creative. And if we need to have an IC at you know, two in the morning on, on, on uh, Monday morning or, or Sunday night, we will never have a system. Now, the, the good news is most of those deals that come have already been through their own process in Europe or in Asia. 
So, so they're pretty fully baked. And so it makes it a very efficient process because it's not starting at square one.